Hi little skeletons, it's Disney Queen Skelly here. So yeah, um, this is gonna be a very interesting video. I truth be told was debating whether or not to make it right now because I didn't bring the DVD with me. But what I'll do is um, insert a picture of it at the end of this video. Yes, I purchased the movie Song of the South. As you guys know, I made the two part response video to the change of Splash Mountain. I read the synopsis and plot summaries for the movie itself. Now, when I did that, my curiosity peaked and I was like, okay, I need to actually watch this movie. I feel like I need to in order to understand it and figure out why it gained the reputation that it did being the movie that it is. So when we got it, I had purchased it. I was really eager to get it because a lot of the reviews said that it looked good that it came on time, that it was very quick to get there, and I was super excited for it. Well, the only problem is, is that when I purchased it, the website seemed kind of sketchy, but at the same time with what the reviews said, I wasn't too concerned about what the DVD was going to be, so I bought it. And it cost me only about 17 bucks to get, and it took three weeks to come in, which is fine. <laughs> Part of me thought it was actually stolen because it was first class delivery and it had already been to a freaking uh, like post office. So I'm just sitting there like someone stole it, someone know what it is, someone stole it, and now I don't have my DVD and I'm screwed. <laughs> but no, it came in on Monday when we went to uh, Universal City Walk and we were so eager to get home. So eager to get home. And when we did get home, we popped in the DVD and started watching it. Now the case itself looks like someone printed the cover off of the gold anniversary edition and just kind of stuck it in there, which is most likely what ended up happening. And then the DVD itself, they pretty much like printed a picture on the front of it. So we popped it in and yeah, it was bootlegged, but at the same time, the visuals were great. The audio was good. Nothing was wrong about it and it wasn't like cheaply done either. So as Hubby and I were watching this, we started to really pay attention to it to see why it gained the reputation that it did, being that it got taken off the shelves because of the racial um, problems that were involved in the movie. And I was expecting the worst. But knowing what the, um, the synopsis I read was, I wasn't too concerned in thinking that something bad was going to happen in the movie. So as we were watching it, and there will be spoilers ahead because I, I need to talk about this and I'm going to be talking about the whole movie. So there are spoilers ahead if you guys have not seen it. When the movie first started out, it was like any Disney movie. It was like the book opening, right? And they, you read like a little story about Br'er Rabbit, Br'er Bear, and Br'er Fox. And then it cut to a narration of Uncle Remus's cabin at the fire. And he told us the story of how this little boy came to his grandma's ranch and how everything kind of transpired. There was nothing significant that really happened that was racist other than the slavery. But for the time, that's what happened. And I was talking to my mother and my grandmother about this. It happened. It, I mean, it's horrible, but things like this happened. And I mean, there's movies like Prince of Egypt that talk about, you know, the story of Moses, but the first seven minutes are a song called Deliver Us, and it depicts Egyptians whipping Jewish people and building the pyramids. The only thing that really happened in this movie that was remotely, not even racist, but the worst thing that really happened was the little boy um, became friends with a girl named Ginny, and Uncle Remus was telling them stories to kind of teach them life lessons. And the first one was for the little boy, and he was kind of teaching him, hey, don't run away from your problems. That's not really how you solve it. So, you know, confront the issue and, you know, do better for it. And the kid was like, yeah, you know what? I'm not going to run away. I'm going to stay and confront my issue. And then the second thing that happened was he found Ginny, the, the girl he likes, Ginny's brother is about to drown this cute little wiener dog named Tinchi, 
so he took Teen Chi in, and his mom told him, yeah, no, you need to you need to give the dog away. And unfortunately, with the first night of him meeting Uncle Remus, Uncle Remus kept him very, very late. So the mom said, hey, just be careful, be mindful of my son's curfew. And, you know, Uncle Remus was like, yeah, of course, I understand. So second time, they got told a story about Br'er Rabbit, Br'er Bear, and Br'er Fox. And he went to go, and the little boy went to go confront the brothers. And then the brothers ended up pushing down the little girl and threatening um, the little boy. And Uncle Remus got ratted out for keeping the dog. So the mom's like, you need to stop telling my son stories for his own protection. So Uncle Remus was all bent out of shape about it. You know, he was so sad about it that when the little boy came around, he was like, I can't tell you stories anymore. And the little boy was heartbroken. But you could see Uncle Remus was heartbroken too. It was clear in his face. And then finally, the last incident to happen was Uncle Remus found the two kids crying after Ginny's dress got ruined. And they were he was telling them the story about one final story about Br'er Fox, Br'er Bear, and Br'er Rabbit, and how Br'er Rabbit got away, and how he found his laughing place, and they both found their laughing place. Well, unfortunately, with how it all went down, the mom told Uncle Remus to officially leave the kid alone, and Uncle Remus was heartbroken, which I understand. He loved telling stories to the kids. He didn't want to stop telling stories to the kids, so he was packing up and leaving, and the kid ran into a bull, bull, like, bull area it wasn't like a fence but it was like a yard with a bull in it and the kid got hit by the bull and got knocked out into a coma and he wouldn't wake up unless uncle remus was there so while watching this we really paid attention to how it was done and how everything was portrayed yes the slaves had their own living quarters and they had like little bonfires and they like marched and sang but I never once saw someone treat them horribly other than the kid's mom telling Uncle Remus to leave the kid alone. And it wasn't even done in a rude way. She was polite about it. And at the end, they actually respected Uncle Remus and thanked him for how he helped the kid out of the coma. So, I mean, I understand, I guess, what would make Disney take this down because they have, I guess, a reputation to uphold. But at the same time, I feel like Maybe it's good to have that movie on the shelves because it could teach kids that, yes, this happened, but also see that these, these people in the movie, the, the mom, the grandma, treated Uncle Remus and the others with respect. It, it wasn't like they were yelling at them, hurting them in any way. They were polite to them and even smiling and joking around. And I know for sure that when I have kids, I'm going to show them this movie. And I encourage you guys to watch this movie too and learn for yourselves. And maybe try and maybe you can come up with a reason for why this was taken down from the shelves. And, you know, try to understand that. Because me personally, I don't understand. There's movies out there that are worse than this that depict slavery in a horrible manner. But they are still left on the shelves for whatever reason. But I loved this movie. I will say I love this movie. And I am so sorry if any of you out there hate me for this or if any of you out there think I am disrespectful for this. I love that movie. And I will happily watch it again because I feel it is important to watch it and to understand it and to know it. Because I was smiling when hearing all the songs because it reminded me of Splash Mountain. And seeing and hearing Br'er Fox, Br'er Rabbit, and Br'er Bear interact was absolutely amazing hearing the song zippity doo come through my speakers was quite an experience and i urge you guys to please watch this movie for yourselves and i thank you all so much for watching and again i am very sorry if i have hurt any of you in this video that was not my intent i am very sorry thank you all so much for watching bye little skeletons stay safe i love you guys